Hi there and thanks for watching. I'm Luz, I'm an artist and I create art journals and in this video I will be talking about how to start an art journal. How to start? Many people ask me how do you begin? And the most simple answer is just start. It's very easy if you just follow my step-by-step -step plan. So I hope you'll be joining me and let me know if this video is valuable for you and if you have started, please share it with me. It would be wonderful to hear from you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe and turn on a notification bell so you won't miss new videos with inspiration, tips and tricks and weekly lessons in my studio in which I give as an assignment each time to my students. Let's get started. The first step is to find yourself an art journal. So you could work in any art journal you want. Um, you could even make it yourself. This is a mini book that I created myself from pages, from different kind of papers, uh, craft paper, just left over paper, book pages, I added some texts, some are even, uh, this is a kitchen towel, um, so it's everything, it's even fabrics where I work on, and it's a very good way to explore different kind of pages. So this is the Dina Wakely art journal in which I used to work, this one isn't available anymore in the market so um, I have some recommendations which I think uh, they are good alternatives for this book and I will add the video about these art journals in the end screen. What I love uh, about the Dina Wakely is that it's containing um, multiple pages from different material like burlap, like um, a thicker mixed media paper uh, canvas like this. So this is what I love to do and I am searching for options. I will put the links of those art journals in the description below. Today I'm going to work in this buku which is created by a friend of mine and it's containing all kind of collected pages that friends of her gave and that she collected. It are, it's no sponsoring, but it's even a Hannah's and Maurits bag in it, which you can fold out. A map, photo protecting uh, page thing, I don't know how it's called. And this is a kind of thicker paper that I love to work on. And in one of my next videos, I will show you a little flip through uh, because some pages of this book are already filled. So this will be the page where I will be working on today. I know that this paper is very good for mixed media. It's thicker, I think it's 200 or 250 grams. And this is a piece of fabric and I love that one and I can't wait to do something with this page. Step two is select a color palette you want to work with right now. Today I feel like I want to work with blue and that's also because of the fabric that's already inside of the book. I enjoy this dark blue mixed with well kind of grayish blue I think it's mm, getting towards this color so these are the colors that I want to work with and I also selected some little things that I could be using for mark maker mark making and that will be the last step so I will show them you once more I have selected Windsor blue paints gray which is one of my favorites and this is pale umber, titanium white and maybe this one but I don't feel like I want to use too many colors and that's really what I can recommend you working on your first page. Just try out one color 
in two tones and then you have you can express yourself enough it doesn't have to be too wild i have also this one that's uh, a prussian blue as well but then with uh, phalo these ones are from galleria from windsor newton and this one is from uh, amsterdam amsterdam uh, so this is my color palette so just grab a uh, one dominant color and grab some neutrals that will be enough for your first project step three is to collect some things you want to use in your art journal for me it's always handy to have something that gives me inspiration like this little card it can be a guideline to well maybe i follow it maybe i don't follow it at all uh, I see also the candle color is coming back a little and this red ochre that I already shown you, this one is coming back. If you mix this little with white, it goes to that salmon kind of pink. So maybe I'll be using that, maybe not. But this is really for me, well, the first thing for yourself, find something that inspires you and it could be a picture, it could be... Uh, something you found on Pinterest, something out of a magazine, it could even be something out of the newspaper and that's something challenging that we're going to do uh, in a few minutes. Then I always grab a nice piece of paper matching the color or not matching the color that I want to use. So a piece of paper, then I have a piece of paper uh, with a pattern that I already created. You could also go for just a piece of book page paper from an old book or something that you want to use and use something that you've already sketched. So it was really fun to make some portraits with my children that visited the studio yesterday. We uh, had uh, all kind of books from artists from Vincent van Gogh, from Be um, from Rembrandt, this one is from Rembrandt, it's Titus, Titus, it's a child, he, uh, he painted and the children just, well, tried to copy it and uh, to, well, to develop their skills in portrait painting or portrait drawing actually and I did some sketches too and this is my, uh, my sketch that I could use for this page. Then find something with texture like wallpaper but it could be anything it could also be the back of a piece of cardboard something you could make a stamp with this is another one so I just grabbed some wallpaper and then finally grab some fabric with a pattern or something well matching the colors of your art journal and I found a little bonus thing that I could use. It's a little thread coming from a top of mine, piece of cloth. And then I have my final challenge. Get the newspaper from today and find something that you could use for this page. And I don't want to recognize it as the thing it is. Like these stairs could be wonderful. Maybe I add that to the page. Ooh. Let's see if there's a little more. This is all about um, home decoration and furniture. So I could even grab part of that. Put a nice house in it. Mm, no. This is nice. But it says sad. Hmm. I don't want to have that. I don't know why anyone would like to have that. 
This is nice. I want to have this. Don't know what it is. Eco design something. So now I have two pieces from out of the newspaper. You see it's matching my color. So what you need is an image to inspire you. Nice piece of paper. Could be anything. Pattern paper. Create a pattern yourself or take some pre-pattern paper. Take something with texture. A sketch you made. A piece of fabric. And something out of your newspaper. Making a background can be done in different ways. Some people just start with putting papers on the background and overlap and overlap and put some paint afterwards. Today I'm going to be starting with painting this first and then add some papers to it. Maybe play around with, well, dark and light colors. So I think I will be needing white. I think this is far too much paint, but I don't mind. Ooh, that's suddenly so much paint coming out of the bottle. Let's see what happens if I just add some little pale umber on the page. You see, it's almost the same color as that I have on the fabric. And if you want to, you could add some water to it. That was the piece of white that <laughs> came out of the bottle, dried up paint. You could also add water to it, which I have next to me. Maybe, I don't know what's going to happen with the page then. And I will add a little paint spray to see what happens. I think this is winter, this is paint spray. And as these ones are Vertically, I want to work in a vertical way as well. And I thought I had the right color of blue, but this seems to not to be the right color. This is more bright blue. This is more like green, like blue. So I don't know if I'm happy with that, but let's see what will be happening. And I'm not thinking too much, I'm just putting on some paint and see what's going to be happening. And the things that I don't like, I simply overlap. And i always doing the other page. What you could do if you don't want to have paint on the previous page, you could uh, put a piece of baking paper between always prevents, also prevents uh, pages from clinging to another, so that's a good thing. And you see that I now have a very light color of blue. I don't think that's the color I want to do something with.
So I don't want to go for this, this color. I added a bit of cobalt blue and I mixed that up with Payne's gray. Otherwise it's becoming too heavy for me. Um, but what I need to do, I am not satisfied about this page. It's a nice page, but not in combination with this one. So I am very um, focused on color. And if the color is not good for me, I just overlap it. And it doesn't matter because it's acrylic. And then you can layer as much as you want. Okay, after the hair drying, I still see I am not satisfied about this color of blue. And it don't doesn't match the page here. So I will overlap that and um, I can simply do that with a little white and pale umber again. And I've taken another tool, as maybe you can see, and this is one of my favorite tools that I have. And that's the roller. You could also use an ink brayer for that. And you see, you get a lot of lovely effects. I missed the roller when I was working with a brush. I'm not used to that anymore. So you can see that even I, I am art journaling and painting. Well, art journaling for, for over four years and painting over 20 years. So you can see that even someone who is very experienced have sometimes issues with the most easy steps like making a background, which is my favorite thing uh, to do on a page. What I'm going to do is uh, a little scary because I want to do something on the fabric as well. Not too much because I'm going to add some other things to and in this case, sometimes you need to uh, put a piece of baking paper behind as well. But I see in my case, it isn't coming through the fabric. So this is okay. And what I'm going to do is now mix a little paint gray and cobalt blue that I already prepared a bit and then I think I'm getting exactly the color of that page. And what I'm going to do is just play around. I've never done this before, but I am going to make some patterns on my roller. And then let's see what's going to happen. I've never done this before. So maybe step five is do something you have never done before. And I think that's really nice. Maybe some of the blue isn't totally matching that, but I could simply, well, maybe I want to do something here or something, create. A blue block-like thing and I'm going to grab some more paint gray to make sure this is the right paint gray. <laughs> mm. Just want to have a little darker spot here and maybe I want to overlap this partly and I am always working very vague I don't want to be I don't want to have this too straight not like a line like here it's flowing into the other part and I could even create something like this on that page but maybe I have to um, look first what I want to do with my 
pieces of paper and fabrics and all the things that I collected. So, but this is a good start of uh, creating a nice background and you could do this over and over again. You could repeat the process of adding new colors, adding new, well, things to, to the page. And you could also do something with a, a texture, uh, like the wallpaper, the textural item. So maybe I'm going to do that in the next phase as well. But some people are, well, working on multiple layers, like even five or six layers. I do mostly one layer and sometimes two, like now. Let's move on to the next step. So let's see what we have. We have some textural things. We have these stairs. Uh, we have the pieces from the newspaper. We have a cat. Battle. This is really wonderful to use. I'm definitely going to use this one. Um, this one would be nice here too. So playing around with the things we have. This one would also be nice to use as a full item. I really love that one. Maybe it's a bit dominant. This one isn't really matching the color palette that I have right now. Then I add, have to add some more like green color. So I'm not going to be using this one. So it's, it's a, um, this is our cat pearl and I don't want to walk right straight into the palette, but hello, how are you today? I think she's hungry. There's a misunderstanding and people often think that you have to use the full um, piece or everything that you collected. But it's just a preparing phase to get yourself into the process, to get yourself started. And it often works for me as a way to overthink what I really want to have. And the things that I don't use, they will be available for an upcoming project in the future. I don't have to use it all. It's just great. Um, this would be a nice piece for somewhere on the page. Mm. Maybe I even find it better than the, the color of blue that I have here. So maybe I will add it here. I'm just playing around and showing you what kind of options I have. Um, I love this one too. Maybe I want, I want it to have on this page as it's really, uh, yeah, it's outstanding here. Mm. I don't want to use the stairs, I think, because that is too different in color. But maybe I have to use this. I don't know what it is. I don't want to see. I think it's a sponge or something. It's looking like a sponge. Mm, that's a bit weird, but I think it's a sponge. I don't want to see that it's a sponge, but mm, maybe I have to do something with, if I want to add um, this sketch, then maybe I have to add something in the lighter color block with white. Um, 
into this part of the page. Um, I could also look how if it's nice if I put it in a kind of a frame. And I think it really is nice if I do that. Uh, you see I am more um, tearing the things rather than cutting. And that's because I like the organic style of tearing things so I will do that with this one as well and then I don't have to tear this this one and it's very nice this is I think it's uh, handmade paper with um, with fibers in it and leaves and I think here a little rests of plants so I like that very much so often I use uh, things out of newspapers or um, images from whatever but I don't do junk journaling as in a way that you fully use things that you haven't created yourself and it's completely up to you whether you want to do that or not but I am working from well the things I create myself uh, I'm skilled enough to do that but if you like using adopting things that are already there it's totally fine and I won't judge that but me I just love working on, on, well, making things new. So I think when I add this one, it would be like, this is wallpaper or something. And this is a painting hanging on their wall. Mm. And they have to clean it with a sponge. I don't know if I want to use this one at all. <laughs> now I see it's a sponge. Um, Yeah. Maybe I, I'm always looking at if these pages are corresponding, if they have any relation. So, for example, when I put, put this one here and this one there, it's both in the middle. And for me, that feels kind of boring. So I just play around with what could I do with this one? Uh, what could I do with this one? Maybe I have to add this piece of fabric here. I don't know yet. Hmm. It's very um, strange to me that I am using a, yeah, completely new colors for me. This, this color of blue is, well, I never used that one before. So I have another something that I haven't done before. So for now, I think this is okay. Only I have to add something that is not a little white. Um, I could also uh, do something with the printing techniques now, as I haven't showed you that yet. So I will do that right now. Piece of wallpaper. I think I want to use this one. And I want to have it here. And that's very nice. Now the white is a bit appearing in the work. And I want to do that too here on this little corner. That's not really standing out, but I like the effect. I think I have to add more paint. No, I don't want the blue. Just a little more. Now it's working.
Yeah, I like it, I think. Um, let's look at having this one here, that one there. Or I could do it like this. This could be already good. Mm. Let's see. I'm still thinking about using this one. Then I add, have to add another color to it. No, I don't want to have this one in. Maybe this one would be better if I just have the flower or something. But that's with silver. I don't know if I like that. And I have this one as a kind of a finishing touch and I think this is lovely if I put it just there and I feel like I am missing kind of warmth so what I want to do is add another neutral and I want to add a color that I recently discovered and it's called Royal Umber mm -hmm. so. And there is still some blue in my previous palette. So sometimes you collect all kind of things and you feel like, oh, I don't want to use them. You just play around and you let yourself be guided by the pages that are already there. And you can overlap the things that you don't feel like you want to have I was very simplistic with choosing my colors. Maybe a little too simplistic and now I feel like this is better.
So sometimes you just see that things aren't working out and uh, in my case I thought my background wasn't good enough, wasn't stable enough. So I thought first I had to add something more of this brown-like color but I didn't realize that it turned out much greener. So this was all green and so I overlapped again. Um, there are some pieces that I already glued down and in the middle of my pasting process I decided I have to change my background. So that's not what usually happens but I thought this page could be wonderful if I add um, some new items. So the things that I've been collecting uh, aren't really matching my my page and that's not uh, something to to uh, be afraid of the process the pages is telling you things um, and you have to follow that you don't have to uh, to hold on to your plan and force to use everything you grabbed um, what I've been doing is take a distance from my work and that's maybe uh, the next step. If you fail or you think you fail, you're not failing. Take a distance, take a little walk outside. I was just looking at these wonderful leaves, dried leaves, and it could be an option to uh, put that in my journal. And I was also looking at this color. I also have some I also have some pink ones and I think this color is lovely and also I had a piece of paper um, from an old book handmade book so maybe I can use that too but first let me see if I can create a color that is a bit like the the petals of the flowers here and then I have, then I need my red ochre, which is one of my favorites at the moment. And go into something I love. So I have my two colors. I put Tita's aside and then I just see if I can make this color. Yes. And it's wonderful, I think, if I put it here somewhere. Totally different plan. My page is still a little wet, but it doesn't matter. And I will add another little pink thing here So if you have problems with your background, you simply go back to that. So you follow the steps, but if you don't feel like this is a good thing right now, then you simply go back to the previous step. And I could also say to myself, I have to um, collect new things. And start all over again but I think this is just perfect when you just go on continue and follow what you love and in my case it's adding this new color to this page and it will become something
I think this will be nice. So I will be gluing this down. So now I'm, I'm going to, I go back to playing around and gluing things down. Step five. This one is already pasted on the page. So I will overlap the brown paper with that. And I used a gel medium from the brand Amsterdam. And this is the heavy gel medium. You could also use the, um, the normal one. And you also have extra, me uh, extra heavy, which is perfect if you want to use uh, very thick fabrics. So, um, yes, I think this is better. Um, before I go to uh, the last step, the final step, uh, mark making, I will uh, glue down my image, my sketch. And I will take the hairdryer to dry this piece. So it's time for the final step. And that's looking what I have. And do some mark making. Do the final things on this page. And I really love to use these ones. And I think this will really make... The page to a beautiful one and I could do some mark making in the empty spaces that I have here and I thought it would maybe it would be nice to uh, add the the shapes of these little uh, petals as I can't I think I can't dry this but it would be wonderful if I have it here or maybe here and I could do that with a Derwent pen, pencil, an intense. And these ones are also lovely to use. Um, so I had to make a choice. I think I will be starting with just adding these little um, branch. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Oh. And I dip the Durant pencil into the water to get the effect of very strong flowers or dried flowers. And I could make a small one here. Sometimes you need to sharpen. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. 
and I also have um, let's see if I can draw this one it's a very simple shape And then I use my brush And another thing that I recently bought is the um, Neocolor Oil Pastel. And what I want to do is just draw one line from here to there to give it a kind of a connection to with this thing. I found these pieces of burlap and what I'm doing right now is just connecting the pieces, the pages, uh, a bit together. You could do that with lines and with mark making, but these kind of things are also mark making tools. So I'm now connecting uh, this part to this part. It's a line. So what I do is um, add some glue and um, I will overlap this part a bit. It's our neighbor's dog and it's barking because I think he's, she's hungry or she wants to play. It's always at the same time around six. So we know when we are quite late with uh, doing our um, YouTube video, preparing our YouTube video, we know that she is, <laughs> she's going to make some noise, but that's okay. I think I'm going to make another line here. And I don't want to put too much glue on the fabric itself. So I put it on the burlap and then I connect it with this little flower shape. And I could put some tiny remaining leaves here just to give it some extras. So this is actually an extra step, mark making and adding tiny flowers, dried flowers, and here's another one. Maybe I could add the pool piece and connect it in a bit to this one. I don't know if this is working, but we just try. Just add a lot of paint on it, uh, glue on it, and then it will work. Mm. 
Let's see if I have another flower that is complete. Yeah, this one. Also put it here. But it doesn't stand out too much there, so I want to put it here. Oh, you don't see that when you glue it down. There's glue all over the place. <laughs> so, mm, not a brown. I want to um, make this one a little darker so it stands out, especially here. I think I will add this real one here or there. I think this is a better place. Oh! <laughs> The glue will dry transparently, so but I'm not sure about if it dries transparently on these flower petals, but I think it will. But I wipe a little, spread it a little. Oh, I've forgotten to add this one. Let's see if it it will be too much if I add it. Maybe just a little and just hang it loosely that it will be um, like this. And then it, yeah, that's a good idea to put it halfway on this page. And then it it's also coming back on the other page later on. So, it's giving a page a loose effect, a nice garden, and I could add more, but I think this will be enough. Um, I think this is my spread for now. So, the best thing to remember is when you work on a page and you think it's not you're not on the right way make some decisions is it color wise is it the collected things you have that you gathered that it's not good enough for this moment you could easily change your plan every time and if you're not satisfied just put some new paint on it and wait there's always something developing in your page and that's my lesson for today at least there's also there's always something hidden and the page wants to tell you something and in my case i thought this was a wonderful experience and it was a great page to work on 
so I hope you're getting started with your art journal. I hope at the end of this video you feel courageous enough to create your own page and have an experience like me. Just get started, help yourself. Uh, with following the steps, collecting your things, deciding your color palette, but everything can change along the way. And well, be brave and get started and create some art. In the next video, you will see more about my larger art journal. And of course, I will also show you more about this kind of books, these kind of books that Meta is creating. So make sure you like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.